Hi class, today our topic of discussion is goods and services taxes. Now, we all know that the government, you know, these taxes are levied and collected by government. Why? To raise funds for various government projects or government expenses or etc okay and as a good citizen it is a prime duty to pay taxes on time now taxes are further divided into two types you know you have direct taxes and you have indirect taxes now what about direct taxes you know these are paid paid by an individual individual or by an organization organization directly directly to the government for example you can say your property tax or you can say organization pays corporate tax or individual pay you know we pay uh, uh, income tax these are all direct taxes paid directly to the government what are indirect taxes now then indirect taxes are paid are paid by an individual individual or an organization or an organization through intermediary okay for example you have sales tax you have service tax you have surcharges you have uh, custom taxes etc these are all indirect taxes which are paid through intermediary. For example, a dealer buys a product from the wholesaler. He pays the tax to the wholesaler and then the dealer sells the product to the consumer and collects the tax from the consumer. Am I clear? So through an intermediary, it goes to the government. So what happened? On 1st July 2017, the government came up with the idea of one nation, one tax. One nation, one tax. And what happened? All the indirect taxes, all the indirect taxes were subsumed as GST, barring few. Few still pay indirect taxes which are not included in GST, you know. For example, I can say petroleum products or uh, you can say liquor, electricity. They are excluded, excluded from, though they are indirect tax, they are excluded from GST. They still follow the previous method of taxation. So, Due to one nation, one theory, the government came up with the idea of GST. Now, let us see in detail what is GST. So, what is GST? It is the subsum of all indirect taxes. GST is applied always on SP. Remember this. This is very important. GST helps to remove the cascading effect. What was earlier happening? Earlier, we were paying tax on tax. Now, this system is removed by GST and GST is levied on every value added. This I'll explain you a little later, okay? Now, look at this, few terms, you know. Intra-state sale. Inter-state sale. What is intra-state sale? Interstate sale means sale of goods 
or services within the same state or union territory which means i purchase something i am a dealer i purchase a good in calcutta and i sold the good in calcutta only so that is my interstate sale what was it interstate sale sale of goods and services sales of goods and services in different in different state or union trade for example i am a dealer i purchase a good in calcutta but i sell that same product in mumbai so that will be my inter state sale now based on this what happened we can divide gst basically in three parts look at it we have c gst central gst this is collected by the central government we have state gst this is collected by the state ugst also at times you know or union territory okay and there is one more i gst integrated gst which is collected just look over here collected by the central government what do i mean for example in case of intra state sale in case of intra state sale suppose i collect gst rupees 1000 is 1000 so 500 goes to the central government and 500 goes to the state government okay but in case of inter state sale if gst collected is rupees 1000 then the entire gst goes to the central government am i clear cgst sgst and igst okay now certain things which we should know first of all who is a dealer who is a dealer a person who buys product or services for resale for resale we tell it retailer also okay and who is a consumer buys product or services not for resale for individual use you know not for resale am i clear there are few more things we should discuss before going into the exercise now look at few terms you know input gst output gst and net gst okay what is input gst now suppose there's a dealer okay who purchases an article or good from a manufacturer okay and sells it to the consumer okay now the dealer purchases an article or good from the manufacturer so what does the dealer does the dealer pays a tax pays a tax okay this is known as the input tax which he pays to the manufacturer now what happened the dealer gives the good sells the good rather to the consumer and charges a tax so the consumer pays a tax to the dealer so for the dealer this is the output tax okay input tax is tax paid by the dealer 
and output tax is tax collected by the dealer and what is net gst how much the dealer will pay to the government net gst net gst is output minus input remember this am i clear now look carefully output gst is gst on the sale price on the sale price and input gst is gst on purchase price which means this is nothing but gst on the sale price minus purchase price which means this is nothing but gst on the value addition i told you gst is levied on the value added by the dealer how much he is adding suppose he buys the product for 10000 and he sold the product for 12000 so he will pay the net gst will be calculated ted on the difference you know 2000 12000 minus 10000 that is 2000 so he pays the net gst to the government on the value he added on the product or services whatever am i clear not to understand all the terms you know input gst output gst what is net gst what is cgst how it is calculated i'll take two examples look at it now look at these two sums and most of your term will be clear what we have discussed earlier first of all look at the gst rate structure which is fixed by the government on essential items and unpacked food is 0% common use item is 9% standard rate of gst is 12% maximum of the goods and services standard rate is 18% and luxury and sin item sin item i am talking about tobacco is 28% okay now look at this suppose let the price of a pen be rupees 500 and the article falls under a slab of 12% suppose then how much the customer pays look the customer pays 500 plus the tax which is 12% of 500 Which is five hundred plus sixty, which is rupees five sixty. So the GST collected by the customer is rupees sixty. This sixty, of course, I am talking about intra-state sale within the same state. This will be divided into two equal half. So rupees thirty goes to the central government as CGST, and this goes to the state government rupees thirty again as SGST. very easy look at this one very important okay suppose a manufacturer sells an article to the wholesaler so the wholesaler will pay a tax to the manufacturer remember that the wholesaler sells it to the retailer so the retailer pays a tax of course and last the retailer sells it to the customer okay now suppose the selling price of manufacturer for the manufacturer the selling price is 10000 rupees so he collects tax suppose at a rate of 18% so rate 18% means 18% of 10000 will be 1800 this much of tax is collected from the wholesaler so this is nothing but the input tax for b for the wholesaler that is the input tax is paying this much okay and that is the output tax for the manufacturer okay so the total amount will be of the item will be 11800 this and this added your net gst in case of manufacturer what does the manufacturer does net gst is what output gst minus input gst which in the first case is 1800 only which means this 1800 the manufacturer deposits as gst which again will be divided 900 and 900 this goes to the central government and this goes to the state government am i clear now what happened suppose b sells the article to c at 12000 rupees 
okay then he will pay the c will pay the tax 18% of 12000 that is 2160 so the price of the commodity will be 14160 am i clear now the net gst which b pays to the government is output minus input now this look carefully this 2160 is the output tax of b and input tax in case of c so for the b the net gst is output which is 2160 minus input which was 1800 which means b will deposit rupees 360 as gst to the government which again divide into two part 180 and 180 this goes to the central government this goes to the state government am i clear now the retailer suppose sells the same article to the consumer at rupees 15000 again the customer will pay a tax which will be 18% of 15000 that's 2700 now look carefully this 2700 again this is the output tax in case of C. Am I clear? What he receives from the customer? So the price of the article becomes 17,700. Okay, which the customer has to pay. Okay, and the net GST is output minus input, which was 2160. So it will be, if I'm not wrong, this will be 540. So this much is deposited again divide into two part one part goes to cgst the other part goes to s gst i'm talking about interstate within the same state be careful if it's interstate the condition is different okay so look carefully how much the customer pays at the end customer pays rupees 15000 plus the tax which is rupees 17,700 and how much the government receives as tax your total GST will be of course 1800 deposited by the manufacturer 360 deposited by the wholesaler and the retailer deposits 540 which if you add is nothing but 2700 which was the tax paid by the customer. Am I clear? And look at one more interesting thing. Look at this. The wholesaler bought the article for 10,000 and sold it for 12,000. He increased the price by how much? By 2,000. So he pays the tax on this 2,000 only. See? 18% of 2,000 is rupees 360. Am I clear? which means GST is calculated on the value created. How much value have increased? On that only GST is collected. Am I clear? Keep it till here in this video. In the next video, we'll see the exercise from ML Agarwal. Okay? Till then, take care.